Hey guys, welcome back to Ostrich Investing, where our goal is to educate and debate specific stock investment ideas. Today we're going to highlight a few key points from FedEx Q1 earnings call. Q1 results were disappointing, and the company reduced 2020 earnings per share guidance. The stock in turn fell by 15% on the news. Uh, so after reviewing the earnings presentation, I wanted to highlight three quotes from the call that I think are important for investors. Now, I know the call happened a few weeks ago, so we're a little bit behind here, um, but we did recently do a more comprehensive video on FedEx, uh, including key considerations for investors, bull, base, and bear case scenarios. So I thought it was important to circle back. Um, I will put a link in the description or on this video if I can figure out how um, that you can check out the more fulsome video. This particular vlog is just going to focus on three key takeaways. Uh, from FedEx Q1 results. Let's jump into it. So we'll start with the results themselves. You can see uh, Q1 results here versus the 2019 comparable period. And the key takeaway, Q1 results were below expectations. Revenue was flat, so you can see 17 billion here in Q1 2020 versus the same 17 billion in 2019 Q1. EPS, on the other hand, was down. So if we look at it on a diluted and adjusted basis, so $3.05 per share in Q1 2020, and that's down from $3.46 in the prior period. So revenues flat, earnings per share down. And then above and beyond that, uh, the company reduced their 2020 EPS, EPS guidance range to $11 to $13 per share. So another earnings per share guide down from, from FedEx. Then if we want to just take a quick look at the stock price chart, I decided to include UPS here um, uh, against FedEx, so one of their, their closest peer and, and competitor, just to show that, it, it, and as we talk through this video, there's, there's an economic theme, there's sort of a macro theme, uh, but I just wanted to show that FedEx down 41% over the last year. Uh, UPS hasn't been a great story, it's, it's been down 2%. But I did want to show the difference, and we'll come back to UPS at, at the end of the video. Uh, but just to show the stock stock chart for FedEx, you can see here that was the first made major earnings miss and guide down, and then you can see another one here, and that's a few few weeks ago when they um, announced the Q1 results. Uh, so FedEx has not been a good story, even versus even on a relative basis uh, to UPS. So we'll start with the three interesting quotes. The first one uh, relates to an Amazon update. So a quote comes from Fred Smith, the CEO, and he said on the conference call, over the summer, these challenges increased somewhat due to the decision not to renew our largest Amazon contract and deepening trade disputes. While the Amazon contract represented only a small proportion of our revenues, the nature of our business is such that near-term profits will be adversely affected since the last bit of volume has significant flow through to the bottom line. So that's fair. We know that the operating margins are in that 6 to 7% range, so they know there's a ton of cost in the business and they play a low margin game. So the quote here is, it, it makes sense on the surface. I think the point that I wanted to raise is if you only go back a few months to June 2019, uh, when FedEx initially announced that they were cutting ties with Amazon, their press release read a lot differently than this quote. In fact, their press release, and the writing is going to be hard for you to see here, um, highlighted, you know, the percentage of total FedEx revenue attributable to Amazon represented less than 1.3% of total FedEx revenue for the 12-month period ended December 31, 2018. Uh, there's significant demand and opportunity to grow our e-commerce business, uh, it goes on to say. So essentially, the, the press release that they came out, the official news release, really downplayed the importance of, of the Amazon contract. Um, and then the quote on the conference call seems to really uh, be in contrast to that. And even though we know that percentage of revenue is a factual number, uh, that loss of the Amazon business is one of the factors uh, that the CEO is, is, uh, is blaming the weaker results on. So I thought it was interesting just that contrast. And again, source here just to highlight Seeking Alpha transcripts is a great resource. If you want to look at earnings calls, um, also listen to this one, which was an interesting one to get the audio on as well. 
Next is more on the macro side, global trade. So this is from Brie Carrere. Hopefully I pronounced her name properly, and she's the chief uh, marketing officer for FedEx. And her quote is as follows. I want to highlight that Q2 calendar year 2019 global trade volumes declined year over year, which is the first decline since 2009. This decline coupled, coupled with JP Morgan's global PMI manufacturing export orders index falling from 47.5 and August from 49 in May leads us to expect global trade volumes will contrast, I think that's meant to say contract, uh, this year on an annual basis for the first time since 2009. So from a macro perspective, FedEx is reading the economic data and projecting that global trade volumes are going to fall. Uh, and here's one, their, their investor slide deck, I think it only had about six slides and a couple of charts in it. This was one of them, which was the U.S. manufacturing PMI. And you can see the fall off here. Uh, really what I wanted to highlight here is one of the reasons that FedEx attributing to the poor results and the weaker guidance is the macroeconomic backdrop. So we'll circle back to that in, a, in a, I think, next slide and in our concluding remarks, but just wanted to highlight that for you here. The third quote, or there's a couple of quotes here, is just the an analyst Q&A. And typically when you've got a stock that's disappointed investors and analysts for a couple of quarters in a row or has guided down, reduced guidance, um, you can often get some uh, interesting Q&A sessions, maybe a little bit entertaining. Um, and I think that's what we got a little bit here. Um, so Scott, one of the analysts, basically highlighted afternoon guys. So this is, I think, the fifth straight quarter of either missing or cutting missing numbers or cutting guidance? Are you approaching guidance any differently, uh, taking a more conservative approach here? So essentially calling out that FedEx has had a tough time over the last year and a half at actually beating the guidance they give to the street. Uh, the next one here uh, comes from Brandon, and he talks about their LTL margins. I won't, I won't go into it in detail, uh, but Fred Smith, the CEO's answer uh, was several minutes long, and I encourage you to take a listen or go into the transcript. I've, I've chopped it off here, but he definitely uh, he 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 took the question to heart uh, and had a, a a pretty long long-winded answer. And I just wanted to uh, quote part of it for you here uh, in audio. We'll see if this works. These numbers on these macroeconomic uh, production indicators. We didn't make those up. That's what's going on. So I, I apologize for the length of the response, but it's to this continuing drumbeat that somehow we're not willing to look at something and you take selective things like, well, your LTL operation isn't as good as, quote, all the others. It's not as good as one, and it's not as good as the other ones in terms of margins for the reasons that I gave you. So it's important to look at this thing with those contexts in mind. Next question. So I liked that. Uh, ho hopefully that worked. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Sometimes, you know, the, the transcripts on the conference calls, you get a lot of information. Sometimes listening, you, you pick up a, a lot of extra details. And and uh, there's no question that, that uh, uh, you know, Fred was in defense mode here on the call. Uh, to be honest, I like it. I like the fact that uh, he wasn't, he wasn't hiding from the questions. He was taking them on, and he, but he wasn't shy from defending the company's position. Uh, so, encourage you to check out the the conference call transcript and call if you uh, if you have a few minutes. So, those are kind of the three interesting points from the call, and I think I want to sum it up uh, just with a bit of a bonus slide here on the margins, and I think that's one of the key parts of the whole story here. And we'll start by saying. Given the relative outperformance by UPS over the last year, I decided just to look at the operating margins for each. You can see that since 2016, uh, UPS was about 12 and a half, FedEx is eight and a half. Um, they've both seen a downward trend since 2016. So perhaps that's due to the competitive pressures, high fixed cost. Um, they've both been trending down. UPS year to date operating margin is about 10%. And uh, that's for the six month period year to date. Note in the recent quarter, so I think for the second quarter is 
FedEx margins have continued to weaken further, uh, and they're sub 6% in Q1 2020. So UPS has seen some margin compression over the last few years, but looks like it's starting to hold firm or maybe even slightly rebound in 2019 year to date. FedEx, on the other hand, in their they've got different fiscal years, but FedEx in their first quarter um, has continued to show deterioration or weakening of the margin. So it could be a difference there in the stories and just something I wanted to highlight for investment. Recall that operating margin was a key uh, driver in our, in our bull base and bear case scenario uh, for our original FedEx video. So in conclusion, with the recent string of earnings misses and guidance cuts, there's no question that management's lost some credibility with investors. FedEx also in a transition period where it's investing heavily in modernizing its fleet and operations while at the same time facing increasing competition, uh, including Amazon, and an uncertain macroeconomic backdrop. Uh, one thing's for sure, FedEx would definitely benefit from a quarter or two without any earnings surprises. So let me know your thoughts. Is the worst of it over for FedEx or should investors wait to see operating results improve before dipping their toes in? We'll be back soon with more content, but until then, happy investing and don't bury your head in the sand.